I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and part two of the Apple iPhone 5 full video review starts right now. In the break, Earl told me on Twitter it's the review he's been waiting for. Well, Earl, you need to go back and watch part one, and everybody needs to go back and watch part one because it's a very important review. This is the Apple iPhone 5. It's the full video review in part two at that. Now, we've heard about this device forever. We've heard about it for over two years, about two years, actually, between the 4S, which we thought was going to be the 5, and now the actual 5. It's out, available in stores at Verizon, AT&T, and Sprint. 1632, 64 gigabyte flavors, white and black. Starting at 199, 299, 399 for 1632 and 64, respectively. Design wise, just to give you a quick recap in case you didn't check out part one, go back and look at it. But quick recap Nano SIM over here, much improved in terms of iPhones. When you look specifically at iPhones, it's a great evolutionary step in a lot of ways. Dual core, one point, or excuse me, dual core one gigahertz Apple A6 processor, a four inch retina display with 326 pixels per inch. 8 megapixel camera with 1080p HD video recording capabilities, a beautiful build quality here, metal on the back now instead of glass, so it actually has a better feel to it, makes it feel like if you drop it, it might not break as easily as the 4 and the 4S, and that 4 inch display makes it feel kind of like TV remote, but you do get used to it uh, over time. A couple of changes here, Apple's lightning port, which looks a little bit different, I'm bringing it in so you can take a look at it if you don't have one uh, or you didn't buy the iPhone, one of the 5 million people that bought the iPhone this weekend. That's what the lightning port looks like. Plugs in either way, and of course you can charge from there. So much like Apple's MacBook Pro line, you've got a charger that you can charge from either direction. Now again, take a look at things like this, the scuffs, the nicks, those came out of the box from both Verizon and AT&T, which I actually ordered that one from Apple, just to make sure we had one in the office on launch day. But scuffs like that, hearing a lot of reports about that on Twitter and online, but again, design changes here, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack at the bottom, just a nice feeling device that's 18% thinner, 20% lighter than the uh, previous iPhone, and I may have those statistics backed up. It's 18% something, 20% something. It's either thinner and lighter, but I may have those flipped backwards, so forgive me for that. But nice device, Apple's iPhone or iOS 6 installed on this with new maps, which we're going to take a look at right now. Let's jump right into maps. We're showing up with Dallas right now, so you can see I have it pulled on, on 3D, and of course I can turn off 3D and zoom in and zoom out. Now Apple's maps have gotten a ringer in the press or been rung through in the press. Huge issues with maps right now. For the most part, I've been relatively, I wouldn't say impressed, but like I've been relatively decent with maps. I haven't had any major issues. I've used it over the weekend to navigate to some places and haven't had a problem. Let's get over where I'm at in Uptown Charlotte and bring that in so you can take a look. Of course, I can make it 3D and you should see some buildings pop up here in just a second. There are some buildings uptown, I promise. Well, this probably is a uh, perfect case. Let me see here if I can get this focus in. Of course, you can twist it around, zoom it around as you see fit. So it's going to be a great solution once it's implemented. That said, it's uh, probably not the best right now in comparison to Google Maps in particular. So obviously, there's the Panther Stadium. And you can see I'm running on 3D right now with the checkerboarding as it's loading. Verizon's LTE nice and fast, as is AT&T's in the Charlotte metro area. I haven't had any problems with either of those. And like I said, I've been testing both. I bought demo units for Phone Dog on both Verizon and AT&T, and I've been relatively impressed. Talk quickly about battery life as well. 82% right now. This is packing a 1,440 milliamp hour battery. Standby time, uh, I believe they quoted eight hours on LTE and uh, with a, or excuse me, talk time of eight hours, standby time of about nine days. Uh, and so I've been really impressed thus far with LTE. They do, they've done a great job of uh, maximizing it and keeping the power consumption low, even on Verizon, which has a historical issue with battery drain with their LTE handsets. Both AT&T and Verizon, not only do they charge incredibly fast, which is something I miss about the iPhone, charge from 50% to 100% in like 30 minutes. It's a great feeling. If you're quick, you know, you're on the go, you need a quick charge in the car, quick charge in the office. It's really nice to do that quick charging thing, and the lightning port works relatively well, although you have to buy, obviously, new accessories if you're an iPhone fan. But, been impressed with that. 1,440 milliamp hour battery. It sounds small, but overall, been pretty impressed thus far. I'm getting about 12 hours, uh, 12 to 14 hours with, uh, with moderate use, which is, in my book, pretty impressive. And because of how quickly it charges, I don't think about it as much, which is nice, as opposed to something like the One X, the Galaxy S3, these other competitors that take forever to charge. So. That is uh, something to keep in mind. Otherwise, maps here, we'll take a look. Uh, 3D down here at the bottom, and of course I can zoom in on where I'm at. Let me pull out and take a look at the map navigation here. We'll do a current location to, um, let's do, uh, let's do current location to, down the way for Verizon's LT to load up. So obviously it brings up right here your map, and of course it brings up a couple of different routes. You can bring up route one or route two, and I can already tell you route two is taking 40 to 30. So, Phone Dog uh, Charlotte is moving to Phone Dog Dallas later in the year. So, 
I, uh, that's what I was looking at in the maps over the weekend. But you can see here, first of two suggested routes, and then of course, you got that. And then Passbook as well. I'm actually gonna bring in the AT&T one for Passbook so you can take a look here at it because this is what happens when you load it up. Passbook is uh, the coolest application that is not really that functional right now. Passbook's great for people like me. I flew 107,000 miles last year for work, and it's great to have your boarding passes all in one place, your tickets, your store cards, your coupons. This integrates with Walgreens, with United, with American, with Delta. Hopefully US Airways will pick up an app pretty soon, although I switched over to uh, American earlier in the year. But you can see Live Nation, Lufthansa, MLB, Sephora, Target, and you can integrate these things in. The downside to it is the only one that I can really get to integrate in well is the Walgreens one. I'm gonna pull it up on Passbook and hide my uh, my barcode here so you can't scan my Walgreens and get points, how dare you? And then of course you can see Walgreens pops up on the Passbook over here, but it doesn't pull up any sort of United stuff or any sort of American stuff unless you have tickets that day. At least I can't figure out a way to get it to integrate in. I would love to be able to open this up and just see United, American. So it's like American, 70,000 frequent flyer points. You know, United, 25,000 frequent flyer points. Delta, 40,000 frequent flyer points. I'd love to be able to kind of see that kind of stuff as opposed to downloading a third party travel app. I get that the tickets, I get that that's a great idea, it's a great solution. I'd love to have it to be a more useful application in those weeks maybe where I'm not traveling or like seven days where I'm not traveling, which it's hard to come by, but I'd still love to see more of that. Let's take a look at speed test. So back, you know, what I was saying about Passbook, not functional just yet. My hope is in the next six to eight months, they'll really make it a more functional application where it's not just, hey, pull it up and get your tickets on the day of travel, but something like, hey, you know, you can look at your United balance or your American balance at all times. And so hopefully we'll see that in the coming weeks and coming months. Take a look at speed test here. Verizon quotes five to 12 megabits per second on the download and two to five megabits per second on the upload on LTE. So far, speeds have been pretty impressive. I'm getting about 20 megabits, obviously, right here on the download and on the upload, about 14.68. And I've been pretty impressed. I've been doing both the AT&T and Verizon speed test throughout the weekend, and that's what it looks like on Verizon. You're getting 19, eh, 16 to 19 megabits per second, so reasonably impressive. Looks like the iPhone saturation hasn't hit just yet. And to bring it over from comparison purposes, I'll show you the AT&T one as well. These are some I ran over the weekend. 14 to 23 megabits per second on the upload. I'm seeing a range of about five to 15, 16 megabits per second. So still relatively impressive on both. Hopefully we continue to see those speeds even with the saturation of iPhone 5s hitting the LTE network. So obviously you've got that. We'll take a look as well at camera, eight megapixel camera on this device and you'll immediately notice that uh, the bottom has changed ever so slightly here. You've got the toggle to switch between still pictures and video. You've got your camera button here. You've got your options up top, grid, HDR, and then of course panorama, which is a big feature right now of uh, iOS 6 and the iPhone 5, so I can move the iPhone continuously. Let's see if I can shoot a panorama of my office so you can see what it looks like right now. I'm gonna keep the arrow on the center line. And let's, bam, okay. So there's my panorama, and that's what my office looks like. So you can kinda see, zoom in here, this is what's going on in the background right now. There's my whiteboard, so you can see that. I'm going over to landscape mode so you can take a look. My chairs, and of course, scrolling over to my bookshelf, and then, of course, the uh, the picture there on the wall. So panorama is impressive, but then back into camera, I want to show you some more. And again, the touch responsiveness thing I talked about in part one, in full effect right there. It's really annoying, and I hope they fix it, like I said, with software updates. But camera is very impressive. They made some minor improvements to the camera uh, all around on the iPhone 5, and pictures have been pretty fantastic. I'll bring over the, uh, the Lumia, or some people on the internet call it the Lumina, the Lumina 9000. Of course, I can focus in and I'll let go, take the picture. I'll bring over some uh, some text here so you can see that as well. And I'm pretty pretty close to the text. So overall, like I said, I've been pretty impressed with the camera. It definitely is on par with uh, the One X and the Galaxy S3. But still, again, it's one of those things where it's not it's not really that amazing. It's not like that much better. Whereas we looked at the four and we were like, you know, the four had a killer camera. And nothing on the market could compete with it. Now it's got some competitors that are doing equally well. So it's like now it's less of well, I don't want the iPhone or the iOS ecosystem, but the camera's awesome, but whatever. And you had to go with the iPhone. Now it's like, I don't want the iOS ecosystem, fine. There are two or three other Android devices that have equal specs, in my opinion, as the iPhone 5. So the competition is definitely caught up, and in a lot of ways, Apple is playing catch up. I'll show you the App Store as well. We'll take a look at this. You can see improvements over here looks different. I have Target loaded up. I actually get rid of this so we can go back and see featured charts and genius. So obviously, it looks a little bit different. This is something they covered. Apple apps, we'll close out of that really quickly. They covered this in the uh, the keynote at uh, in, in San Francisco when they announced the iPhone 5, but you can see the differences here. CNN's app is actually pretty impressive and it's optimized for the four inch display. And I'll show you in just a second what a four inch one looks like versus the old 3.5 inch 
applications that haven't been optimized. But you've got Genius, you've got the ability to search, and when you search for something, we'll go to CNN, for example, and you'll see it'll pop up in kind of a card-like format here. So obviously I have that one already downloaded, Sirius, and I can scroll over and access those like that. So the uh, overall implementation of the App Store, a little bit different here, and of course I can open and go straight to CNN, or I can click on it and see details, reviews, and related, and more. So I go over here and sc see screenshots of the actual application, the description, the information, developer info, version history, and of course reviews and the related applications as well, what customers also bought. And it's pretty quick and easy to use. So nice improvements here. I, uh, it seems like, again, uh, it's, a nice, it's a nice improvement. I would love to see with updates not having to enter my password. I think it's absurd for a free update that I still have to enter my password to the App Store to download an application. That said, other than that, it's a nice improvement. It's nice to see them kind of gradually improving, but I think they're going to have to do more than just that. And also weather, show you some minor updates here. Weather application looks a little bit different. You've got your ability to go through today's hourly highs. And then of course you've got highs and low for the rest of the week. And then of course you can customize like you could in old versions where you can see the different, uh, the different weather configurations. Another big thing for me, and I haven't really configured it on this device, but that, the VIP inbox and you can see, go to Fandango for example. And uh, let's go in here and see, do, 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 do. let's go over to here and you can see VIP. The VIP inbox is nice. I can move over stuff that I think is important there, and that's a nice touch. But again, just really optimizing that four-inch display. It's nice to see it here. Of course, pinch to zoom still in effect, and no real changes here other than the actual header color, but still, it's nice to see uh, those changes. There's me, apparently. Oh, I was unboxing the Galaxy Victory uh, 4G LTE. So impressive all around there. Impressive with iTunes as well. Let me pull this out so I can actually see it. And then music as well. So downloading music on the cellular connection is going to be a little bit better over here. And of course, you can FaceTime now on Verizon, on Sprint, and then if you have a mobile share plan on AT&T as well, FaceTime over a cellular connection. So here's what the iTunes store looks like. Movies, TV shows, search, and more down here at the bottom. So if you're kind of craving some more stuff about iOS 6 in particular, stay tuned because I'm going to do a separate iOS 6 video. Be on the lookout for that and you'll see some of the more of the upgrades to Apple's newest operating system. That said, this is the iPhone 5. Stay tuned for more on PhoneDog.com. We're going to have a ton of dogfights. We're going to dogfight this against the Galaxy S3, the HTC One X, and more this week. So be sure to check that out on PhoneDog.com. Is this an awesome device? It's depending on what you're coming from. If you're coming from an iPhone, you're a big fan of the ecosystem, you're a big Apple fan, it's a great option. And this is still an option I would recommend to a lot of people. But let's be honest, I'm not going to let Apple slide in any other way that I wouldn't let Samsung slide or let Nokia slide or let HTC slide. We've got to get away from this whole, it's the iPhone, so it's great mentality that I feel like a lot of people have. There are some major issues with this phone. I'm seeing static, little staticky things across the keyboard. The touchscreen responsiveness isn't great. I'm having issues with uh, that. And of course, the build quality, Taylor's having issues, and I'm having some issues on the review units with scratched build quality or scratched aluminum out of the box. These are kind of things that you wouldn't expect. And of course, the maps issues as well. You wouldn't really expect from Apple. That said, I'm going to hold them to the fire. Those are some serious problems. And I hope to see those fixed in a future software version, obviously, with the exception of the, uh, the scratches. I hope they just fix that. Uh, all around, but major issues, and again, is the best smartphone on the market? For some people, of course, it's great. Their business is far more diversified, but I really see a lot of similarities to RIM. They've got to, uh, they've got to enhance and make their products better and really uh, you know, evolve and update as opposed to just making something that's kind of the same, a little bit lighter, a little bit thinner, but kind of the same. So I'm going to hold them to the fire with that. Are there better options on the market overall? Depends on what you want, but I do think there are some better alternatives. I mean, the Galaxy S3, the One X, and the iPhone 5 are neck and neck. I don't really see the iPhone 5 as dramatically better than those two Android devices in particular. And there's some great choices depending on what price point you want to go with. Is it awesome for an iPhone user? Yeah, it's a great update. It's thinner, it's lighter, it's faster. iOS 6 is nice. But again, Android's caught up. And Apple, I think, realizes that. So my hope is for the next version of iPhone, iPhone 6 or 5S, they make a design that's a little bit different, and they update iOS 6. Keep it locked on PhoneDog.com for continuing coverage on this device. The Apple iPhone 5 is here. Lots of dog fights. Keep it locked at PhoneDog.com and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash PhoneDog. Join the greatest tech giveaway ever where we give you the opportunity to win a smartphone at uh, facebook.com slash phone dog. Hit me up on Twitter as well. Let me know what you think of the iPhone. You think it's great. You think it's terrible. You're a Windows phone or an Android fanboy. You love that stuff. You think it's terrible. It's crapple. It's blah, blah, blah. Let me know. Phone dog underscore Aaron on Twitter and on Facebook at facebook.com slash phone dog AB. Thanks for watching. Much more coverage to come on Apple's flagship product, the iPhone 5, which has sold 5 million of them this weekend. So obviously, it's off to a good start. Stay tuned for more on phone dog.com. We'll see you next time. 
Kelly Martin just told me he stayed home to watch my iPhone 5 review video. So Kelly, this is for you. Woo, doggies.